Welcome to Everyday Cooking with Anne. It is the season, it's the fall season, and today I'm gonna to teach you how you can start some new traditions with your family uh, with Halloween. And I, since it's family tradition season, we're going from Halloween to Thanksgiving to Christmas. I'm gonna be spending time with the next few vid videos to show what our family has been doing for years to create great memories with our children and grandchildren. And it, just because our family is the way we are, it usually does send around some kind of food or some kind of ama amazing thing that we're gonna make for each other. So this is a tradition I've had with my children since they were very young and they all love it. So and they do it with their families too. So let me show you what we're gonna make. We are gonna make homemade donuts to invite people over on Halloween night to come drop by and visit drop in and have a homemade donut. Now you do need to prepare a little bit in the afternoon because it does need to raise. Our donuts will need to, the dough will need to raise a little bit, but not for long. It's a fairly simple, easy recipe. So the, to start off, it is gonna be a yeast dough that we're gonna be making. And if you're familiar at all with any of the other rolls and breads that I make, my technique is the same for everything because that's what makes them turn out really light and fluffy. So pay attention and if not, go to my other videos with breads and you'll see how I make rolls and breads to turn out really great. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of warm water here, probably a third of a cup and I'm eyeballing it right now, but this is nice and warm, I've already checked it. Put a little bit in a glass bowl. I'm gonna put in a sprinkle in my yeast. I have a tablespoon of yeast here and just a little bit, maybe a teaspoon of sugar because that's what's gonna activate it and make it all proof up and fluffy. And while this is raising and fluffing up, I'm going to leave this over here. We're going to come over here to the stove and we're going to get prepared by putting in a half a cup of whole milk. It has to be whole milk. And I'm going to turn my stove on because I want to just barely bring it to a very low boil. And I'm going to also put in a half a cup of buttermilk. This is going to get about a really great flavor too. So you don't have to be exact on this. All you have to do is add a little bit more flour if you want to do that. So we're going to add this in here too. And we're going to wait for this to... Heat up a little bit. It's come to a little bit of a boil right now and I'm gonna add this buttermilk and milk into my mixing bowl. Okay. And along with that, I'm gonna add in the sugar so it'll dissolve in the warm milk and buttermilk. So it's about a third of a cup of sugar. I'm gonna be adding a half a teaspoon of salt to this mixture. and also a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. I'm just gonna eyeball this too. The nutmeg is really gonna give the donuts a really interesting, wonderful flavor. Okay, now to cool this down a little bit, oh yes, and I'm also going to add six tablespoons of melted butter. So all the ingredients in this mixture are really fresh, wonderful ingredients. The best you can put in a, some kind of a roll mixture. Okay, I've got this all mixed up and it just looks like the sugar's dissolved nicely. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do is I have here, let me put the salt in here, I have four and a half cups of uh, flour. Now you don't just dump in all the recipe what it calls for on the flour. You want to do, we're going to put a couple of uh, cups in at, at the beginning right now. And that's going to kind of cool down our hot mixture too so that we can add the yeast in a little bit so that it doesn't get too hot. It doesn't make it too hot. So I'm going to add this, a couple of cups of this. And the, the flour is great because it kind of cools down this hot mixture, gets it ready for... Okay, now we're going to go ahead at this point and add, we have two whole eggs that I've already beaten and we're going to add this also. The 
reason that, like I said, the reason that we add a little bit of flour at the beginning to the warmer milk, now I don't know what it is about the um, milk when you steam it or scorch it, not scorch it, but steam it at the beginning, that creates some kind of magic in your rolls that make all rolls and bread so much better and that's why I heat my milk to just barely a boil. Okay. Now I'm going to just test this with my finger. Okay, it looks like it's about ready. I'm now going to go ahead and add my yeast, uh, this kind of proofed in here, to the mixture as well. So now we have all the ingredients except for the rest of the flour. So you saw me already, we put in two cups of flour. We're going to put in another cup in now one at a time. Now you could probably make this in the afternoon of um, Halloween. If your kids come home from school and they want to make it with you, this is really fun. This is a fun activity with children, especially to make homemade donuts. Of course, they're all probably getting dressed up and ready to go trick-or-treating and don't care that much. But you know what, especially the adults love dropping by to get the homemade donuts. So that's three cups of flour. This will be number four. And this is where you just want to add just what you need from here on out. And then we're going to knead it a little bit on the counter. Okay, I've added about four cups of flour here, and you can see that it's already not too sticky, a little bit sticky, but you want it that way when you do the, start doing the kneading. So what I'm going to do is add my other half a cup of flour, I'm just putting on my counter here, which has been cleaned, of course, and I'm going to add my dough, kneading it a little bit. Now, this actually does need to have, like some of my rolls, you don't need very much, but this needs to knead for about five or ten minutes. So, let's get going on this. And uh, during this time, you don't want to be adding a lot of flour unless you really need to. If it gets too sticky again. So, I'm going to start kneading. Now, if you want, you could put this in your KitchenAid or some other thing that helps you knead it with a kneading dough hook. But I personally like to knead my own dough. I don't know what, so there's something satisfying about kneading your own dough and putting your own hands in it. And like I've said before, I think this creates love energy into the food that you make. Before I end the last part of the video, I forgot to add the uh, half a teaspoon of vanilla, which I did before I started kneading all of it together. So, the vanilla's in there now, and I want to show tell you one more thing about the yeast. You can use regular yeast or you can use um, instant yeast or compressed yeast all of it works about the same if you use the instant yeast your rising time is going to be a little bit shorter so if that's a concern for you and you don't need to go out and you want to make sure that it's going to be done on, on the exact time you would like to have everything ready that instant yeast is a good idea that's what i put in today okay this is what the dough looks like i've been kneading it for about five minutes and you can see i don't need any more flour in it it's all perfectly Nice and smooth, wonderful dough. You see a little bit, few flecks of, um, of the nutmeg in there too. So what I do is I don't really do anything except kind of clean with my fing uh, fingers out the dough. I don't wash my dough, wash my bowl to make it look prettier. And then I put about maybe a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of oil in the bottom of my bowl. And then I take my the top of my dough and cover it with the oil so that it doesn't dry out. I'm gonna go, now when you see this dough again, it'll be all risen up. So I'm gonna put this all in my oven. I have a really particular kind of oven that has an oven proof button, which I really like. So I put my oven proof button on. I'm gonna put it in my oven to proof and it should take at the very most a, an hour, but I'm gonna check it in about 30 minutes and see if it's ready to go. The next step uh, is to roll out our dough. Um, this is our um, dough that we took out of the oven that was proofing, and you can see it's about doubled in size. And I'm going to go ahead and just punch this down. 
and I'm going to put this on top of the pastry cloth. And for those of you who have never seen any of my other um, videos on how to make rolls or dough or breads or anything, this is a pastry cloth. And I use this all the time to roll out any kind of pastries, a special roll out type cookies, anything to make rolls. I use this all the time. I buy a new one every year because it gets pretty gunk up to me. You don't want to have to wash it. So I season this with flour because when I'm using a flour inside this pastry cloth, it, uh, you know, that, it keeps you from adding too much flour to your rolls and that's what keeps your rolls light and fluffy. So this is, I stand by using this. Okay, and I have of course a little um, French rolling pin and a little stockinette and I usually put a little bit of flour on here too and rub it in there so we don't have to keep putting too much flour. Okay, so our recipe, and I'm gonna just try this with just a half of a, and I'm using my dough cutter here. I'm gonna do half of the dough at a time. We'll put this other one over here back in the bowl. I'm going to put a little bit more flour in the bottom here where it was a little bit greasy. And I'm going to roll this out into a rectangle. Now I believe this recipe, we'll see how it turns out, but I believe it will make about 12 rolls. We'll see, this should make at least 6. 12 donuts not rolls, we're doing donuts here. So you want to you want to put this out and you want to have it be about a half inch in width. Okay, and this is a donut cutter. You can get this at any probably cooking store, maybe even a grocery store would have this. So what I'm going to take here is in the corner here, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my first donut. Okay, th these are the donut holes and these are the donuts. And you're going to want to, I think you're going to want to keep the donuts and the donuts whole. So I just start lining this up on my on my tray. So let's do this one more time. Okay, you want to take the hole out and put the donut over here to raise. It is going to have one more uh, raise while you get the glaze and everything else ready. If this gets a little bit hard, I'll dip it in a little bit of flour. We're in our next phase of making our donuts. And they have been rising in the oven for about 40 minutes uh, for the second rise. And you can see them here. I've got my little donut holes as well. So we're going to go ahead and I have heated up. Some just you can use canola oil, vegetable oil, whatever you prefer. I'm using my pan, and I probably don't need this big a pan, but usually I make twice as many donuts as I'm making tonight for a crowd. So I would use this pan. The reason I'm doing this is you either need to have it so it's at no more than 350 to 375 at the very most, because you want to be able to bake to fry the donuts evenly on each side so they so that they're gonna turn out correct. So I use a, my electric fry pan. You can use a pot and put them in there too. You can put more oil in a pot, and you, but you do need to have a thermometer to make sure it's around 350, 375 at the very most. Otherwise, it'll cook unevenly. So let's try the first one. I'm going to go ahead and put, lift it up. You can see these donuts have been, uh, they're nice and airy and light. The dough right here, let's see what happens when we put them in the oil. Going to put a couple here and these need to cook maybe about one minute on each side we're going to try and see what that will be now you can see it won't take long to cook these because i've got lots of oil and lots of space so i'm just kind of i'm going to put a little timer on here for 50 seconds right now and just see if i need to turn them over before that okay it looks like this is a little bit hot i'm going to turn these over now you want to make sure they're fried completely through. And I'm just using a skewer right now because I figured it was the easiest thing to turn them over with. Maybe then turn it down a little bit to closer to 350 and let these cook. While those are cooking on that side, I'm going to put a couple more in here. You definitely don't want them any darker than this. Okay, I'm going to take these out right now. 
And I'm going to put them on a paper towel on a pan here to kind of soak up the oil. Now I realize these are not perfect looking, but actually homemade tastes really, really good. Okay, these are going to, you're going to cool these just slightly before we actually start putting a glaze on and decorate them. Okay, now that we took those out, we're going to turn these over. We're going to take this over here because uh, we're going to do these last. We just fried these donuts. And I made a little glaze that you put on. You put in about um, a quarter cup of milk. I like to use canned milk because it's, I think, got a lot of flavor to it. A little bit of vanilla, like a, a half a teaspoon of vanilla, two cups of powdered sugar. And once these have kind of cooled down a little bit, but they're still warm, you just take the top of one and just dip it right in the glaze like this. Put it over here. Okay, and you can use whatever you like on here for sprinkles, but I just happen to have these on hand, so these are going to be my decoration. And of course, there's a variety of different things you can do to decorate. Uh, I haven't been able to find the sprinkles yet. So anyway, when these are cool, they're ready to serve, and actually they're going to still be warm. They're going to be delicious to have to serve to your guests. So it's just a fun idea with your family to put on an event like this for Halloween night.